The all-time greatest Cuban players on one team. That's what we're putting together here today. The second all-time team on this channel after we did the Dominican team a couple weeks ago. Naming an all-Cuban team was a bit harder than the all-Dominican team. Not for lack of talent, it's just that you don't find all the talent in one place. Because of certain situations in the U.S. and Cuba throughout history, the best Cubans often were never able to play in MLB, and some only managed to play for a short time. Some players on this all-Cuban team made their mark not in MLB, but in Cuba, Mexico, the Negro Leagues, or more recently in NPB. As I did the last time, I'm only including players who grew up in Cuba. That means Jose Canseco and Rafael Palmeiro will not be on here. Canseco won an MVP, hit 462 home runs, stole 200 bases, and was the very first member of the 4040 club. He was born in Cuba but left the island at the age of one. Palmero had over 3,000 hits, 500 home runs, and 1,800 RBI. Definitely good enough for this team. And he did live in Cuba till the age of seven, so it was tempting to put him on here. But it was in the U.S. where he spent most of his childhood and learned to play baseball. So I left him out. Just as in the last video, we'll have one player at every position, plus a DH, a five-man rotation, and a couple relievers. Starting behind the plate, our first player is an active one. 34-year-old Yasmani Grandal is now in his 12th Major League season. The first three years were with the Padres, followed by four with the Dodgers, one with the Brewers, and is now in season number four with the White Sox. He's a two-time All-Star, 183 career home runs, with a high of 28 in 2019. In 2021, he only played in 93 games, but had an OPS of 939, 420 on base percentage, and a 520 slugging. 903 career hits, so 1,000 hits and 200 home runs could be reached next year. Grandal was born in Havana, but moved to Miami when he was 10. While in Cuba, he was a member of the junior national team, where he played at third and short. First base, definitely Tony Perez. He played at third in his early years, but most of his Hall of Fame career was spent at first. 23 years in MLB from 1964 to 1986, 16 of those years with the Reds, where he started and ended his career. Also played for the Expos, Red Sox, and Phillies. Seven-time All-Star, four times finished in the top 10 for the MVP. Best was a third-place finish in 1970. That year, he hit 40 home runs with a line of 317, 401, 589. Career highs in all those categories. For his career, he had 2,732 hits, 379 home runs and 1,652 RBI. Seven times had over 100 RBI. Perez started his pro career in 1960 with the Havana Sugar Kings, the AAA affiliate of the Cincinnati Reds at the time, inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2000, and still alive today at the age of 81. Second base, Tony Taylor. From 1958 to 1976, he played a total of 19 seasons. He started by playing a few seasons with the Cubs, then spent the majority of his career with the Phillies, a few years in Detroit, and the final three seasons back with the Phillies. He made one All-Star appearance in 1960. He started that season with the Cubs, but was then traded to the Phillies. He had a career-high 26 steals that season. He just made it into the 2000 hit club, 2007 in all, and 234 steals. After retiring as a player in 76, he became the Phillies manager from 77 to 79, and later again from 88 to 89. His last coaching role was with the Marlins in 2004. At third base, we're going with someone who never played in MLB. Omar Linares played in the Cuban National Series from 1985 to the 2001 to 2002 season. From 2002 to 2004, he played for the Chunichi Dragons of NPB. 19 seasons altogether. In the 95 to 96 season in Cuba, he hit 20 home runs in only 58 games. In 92 to 93, he batted 446 one of three times he batted over 400. That year, he also had a career-high 593 on-base percentage and an 826 slugging for an OPS of 1419. In his Cuban National Series career, he played in 773 games and hit 172 home runs with 981 hits, a career slash line of 384, 524, 666. I could have moved Tony Perez or Tony Taylor over to the third for this team, but I wanted someone who was a full-time third baseman during his career. When Linares went to play in Japan, he was already 34, so he never got a chance to prove himself outside of Cuba during his best years. In his final NPB season in 2004, he slashed 283, 363, 403, with seven home runs in 60 games. At shortstop, it's definitely Burt Campaneris. He played a total of 19 seasons between 1964 and 1983, started his career with the Athletics in Kansas City, later moved to Oakland, 13 years with the A's. 
Later years were played with the Rangers, Angels, and one final season with the Yankees. A six-time All-Star and a member of three World Series championship teams, he led the league six times in stolen bases, once in triples, once in hits, three times in sacrifice hits, twice in both at-bats and plate appearances. His career high in stolen bases was 62 in 1968. His career high in home runs was 22 in 1970. Other than that, he never hit more than eight home runs in a season. For his career, 2,249 hits and 649 steals. He is the A's franchise all-time leader in games, at-bats, and hits. Among shortstops, he's fifth all-time in games played, seventh in double plays. A member of the A's Hall of Fame, still around at age 81 today. Three selections for the outfield. First one is Hall of Famer Tony Oliva. From 1962 to 1976, Oliva spent his entire 15-year career with the Twins. Though he started in 62, he didn't get in a full season till 64, when he won the Rookie of the Year award. Eight-time All-Star, two-time MVP runner-up, three times in the top five, five times in the top ten, and one Gold Glove award. Five-time league leader in hits, four times in doubles, once in slugging, once in total bases, run scored, sack flies, and intentional walks, and a three-time batting champion. His career high in batting was 337 in 1971. In his rookie year, he reached career highs with 32 home runs, 43 doubles, 217 hits, and a 557 slugging. He ended his career with 1,917 hits, 220 home runs, and a 304 average. His career numbers don't look all that impressive, but you have to remember two things. One is that he only played 15 seasons. The other is that the era he played in was dominated by pitchers. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2022. Next, Hall of Famer Minnie Minoso. He started his career in 1946 with the New York Cubans of the Negro Leagues. He was a two-time All-Star with the Cubans in 47 and 48. From 1949 to 1964, he played in MLB. Two stints with the Indians, three stints with the White Sox, one season each with the Cards and Senators. He was a seven-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove winner. Never won an MVP, but finished fourth four times. While with the Cubans, he led the league once in triples. He went on to lead the league in MLB in triples three times. Also led the league three times in stolen bases, once in total bases, doubles, hits, and games played. Twice in sack flies. And the one that really catches your eye. Ten times he led the league in hit by pitch. For his career, he had 2,113 hits and 216 steals. He made a brief return with the White Sox in 1976 at age 52 after an 11-year absence, but only played in three games. One more appearance with the Sox in 1980 when he played in two games. He became one of only two players to appear at the major league level in five different decades. In 2022, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame along with Oliva. The last one is Cristobal Torriente. After playing in the Cuban and Black Leagues from 1912 to 1919, he played a short career of just 10 seasons in the Negro Leagues, mostly with the Chicago American Giants, later with the Kansas City Monarchs and Detroit Stars, all from 1920 to 1928. In 1932, at age 38, he made a brief comeback, where he played in two games for the Louisville Black Caps. Though his time was short, it was productive. He led the league three times in on-base percentage, twice in slugging, OPS, OPS+, plus, and doubles. One-time league leader in batting, walks, and RBI. Career high in batting was 411. On-base percentage, 481. Slugging, 612. Those all came in different seasons. Ended his career with 759 hits in 646 games. A 10-year career slash line of 340, 427, 523. Torriente died in 1938, only 44 years old. In 2006, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. At DH, we have Jose Abreu. He's been in MLB since 2014, every year with the White Sox until this year, when he joined the Astros. Prior to that, he played 10 seasons in the Cuban National Series with Cienfuegos. While in Cuba, he was one of the greatest hitters ever. In the 2010 to 2011 season, he hit 33 home runs in 66 games. A year later, he hit a league record 35 home runs in 87 games. Since going to MLB, he's a three-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger, the 2014 Rookie of the Year, and the 2020 American League MVP. He's twice led the league in slugging, total bases, and RBI, once in games, hits, and OPS+. Plus. He has 251 career home runs, ranking fourth among Cuban players, second behind Perez among born and raised Cubans. 1,530 hits. And he's got time to add to those numbers. He's 36, not producing like he used to, but still an everyday player. One more player we've got to mention here is Martin Dehigo. 
We can't put him at any one position because he played every position. Sometimes he played more at short, some years mostly at first, some years the outfield, and he was a great pitcher. From 1923 to 1945, he played in the Negro Leagues, Cuban League, and other Latin American leagues. In 1926, he led the Cuban League in batting, slugging, OPS, OPS+, plus, and home runs. A year later, he again led the league in home runs. He won four MVPs in Cuba. He was an all-star with the New York Cubans in 1935 and in 1945. In the years in between, he played in Mexico. After 1945, he returned to Mexico and made his final appearance in Veracruz in 1950. In addition to his hitting, he was also a great pitcher. He holds the Cuban League record for most career wins and complete games. In 1938 in Mexico, he was 18-2 with a 0.90 ERA as a starting pitcher and won a batting title in the same year. He holds the LMB record for highest career winning percentage at 676. He is the only player to be inducted into five baseball Hall of Fames, the American, Cuban, Mexican, Dominican, and Venezuelan. Cooperstown induction came in 1977. So the starting lineup would be Grandal at catcher, Perez at first, Taylor at second, Linares at third, Campaneras at short, and in the outfield, Oliva, Minoso, and Torriente, Abreu at DH. And if any of those guys need a day off, Dehigo can cover for them. Other reserves could include Joe Azcue, an all-star catcher for the Cleveland Indians in 1968. First baseman Orestes Kindelan, shortstop Herman Mesa, two of the best Cuban League hitters in the 80s and 90s. Tony Gonzalez, an outfielder with over 1,400 hits and 100 home runs in MLB from 1960 to 71. Or more recent players like Yuli Gurriel or Kendris Morales. Now, let's make a rotation of the best five Cuban starting pitchers. The first one would have to be Louis Tian. His career started in 1964 in Cleveland, ended in 1982 with the Angels. The years in between, he played for the Twins, Red Sox, Yankees, and Pirates. Best years were in Cleveland and Boston. Three-time All-Star, three times in the top six for the Cy Young, three-time 20-game winner, two-time ERA King with a career low of 160 in 1968, three-time leader in shutouts, two times in ERA+, plus, once in whip, FIP, hits per nine, and strikeouts per nine. Career win-loss record of 229 and 172, 2,416 strikeouts in 3,486 innings. Tiant also played in Mexico before and after his major league career. He is a member of the Red Sox Hall of Fame. Camilo Pascual played from 1954 to 1971, mostly for the Senators' twins. Last three years were with the Reds, Dodgers, and Indians. A five-time All-Star, he led the league in strikeouts three years in a row from 61 to 63. A three-time league leader in complete games and shutouts. Two-time 20-game winner. Led the league once in batters faced, FIP, and strikeouts per nine. He ended his career with 174 wins and 170 losses and 2,167 strikeouts. On opening day in 1960, he struck out 15 batters, an opening day record. He is a member of the Twins and Cuban Halls of Fame. Mike Cuellar played one year for the Reds in 1959. The rest of his career spanned from 64 to 77, totaling 15 years with the Cards, Astros, Orioles, and Angels, with his best years being in Baltimore. He was the 1969 American League Cy Young winner, one of three times he was in the top six, a four-time All-Star, led the league once in wins, twice in win percentage. In 1970, he led the league with 40 starts and 21 complete games, career record of 185 and 130, ERA 314. Cuellar was a member of two World Series champion teams. He's a member of the Orioles Hall of Fame. Going way back for the next one, Dolph Luque started his MLB career in 1914 with the Boston Braves, played most of his career with the Reds, and later years with the Brooklyn Dodgers and New York Giants. He retired in 1935 after 20 seasons. In 1923, he led the league in wins with 27. Twice he led the league in ERA, three times in shutouts, twice in ERA+, plus, three times in hits per nine, once each in whip, fip, and home runs per nine. Career record was 194 and 179, ERA 324. He was the first Latino pitcher in MLB and the first to be the winning pitcher in a World Series game. After his playing career, he managed in Mexico for eight years. He's a member of the Reds, Cuban, and Mexican Halls of Fame. Now for a more recent one. Levon Hernandez played from 96 to 2012 for 11 different teams. Rookie of the Year runner-up in 97, two-time All-Star and once a Silver Slugger. Best known for his workload though, 
league leader three consecutive years in innings pitched and batters faced from 2003 to 2005 with the Expos and Nationals. Twice in games started, twice in complete games. For his career, he was 178 and 177 with over 3,000 innings, 24 strikeouts shy of 2,000. In 1997, he was the NLCS and World Series MVP, helping the Marlins to their first World Series title. So the starting rotation is Louis Tian, Camilo Pasquale, Mike Cuellar, Dolph Luque, and Levan Hernandez. Other possible starting pitchers include Jose Contreras, an all-star with the White Sox in 2006, Orlando Hernandez, a 17-game winner on the Yankees World Series team in 99, or Diego Segui, the 1970 AL ERA king with the Oakland A's. In the bullpen, there's no doubt one arm would be Araldis Chapman, a major league reliever from 2010 to the present, mostly with the Reds and Yankees, also a big part of the Cubs' 2016 championship team. This year, he's pitched for the Royals and Rangers. A seven-time All-Star, one time in the top ten for the Cy Young, 318 career saves, career high of 38 in 2012, and again in 2013. Career ERA is 254 in 675 innings. Career low was 151 back in 2012. Career strikeouts per nine innings rate of 14.8. Career best was in 2014 when he had 17.7 strikeouts per nine. He holds the record for the fastest pitch ever, 105.1 miles per hour, or 169.1 kilometers per hour. Also holds the record for most consecutive relief appearances with at least one strikeout. Over two seasons, he struck out at least one batter in 49 consecutive appearances. The other reliever here is Levan Moanello. He started his pitching career in Cuba in 2013. Since 2017, he's been a member of the South Bank Hawks in NPB. He's been used in the setup role most of his time with the Hawks. In 2019, he recorded a 152 ERA in 60 relief appearances. In 2020, 50 games, ERA 169. 2021, 33 games, ERA 115. 2022, 53 games, ERA 103. And this year, he pitched 27 times in relief with an ERA of 0.98 before going down with a season-ending injury. Moanello is not a defector, that's why we haven't seen him in Major League Baseball. But with numbers like that in Japan, you've got to wonder what kind of damage he would do in MLB. And he's not the only one. Closer Rydell Martinez of the Chunichi Dragons finished the 2022 season with an ERA of 0.97 in 56 games. This year he's pitched 32 times in relief without allowing a single earned run. Whip 0.806. But since I'm only choosing two relievers here, I went with Moanello since he's had more success over a longer period of time. And paired with Chapman, it gives us one closer and one setup man. Other choices for the bullpen would be Rysel Iglesias, closer for the Atlanta Braves, Danny Spies, an all-star with the Devil Rays back in 2005, and Tony Fosas, who threw 500 games in relief from 1988 to 99. And that's all, the best Cuban players of all time on one team. How would you do it differently? Let us know in the comments. That's all for this one, and until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya.